transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords eternally retold. So what exactly is Soul Calibur? To me, Soul Calibur is the first true 3D fighting game. And you know, I've started playing fighting games like with Soul Edge, Soul Blade since the first part of the series. I thought it was interesting to see how it was a weapons-based fighter, but you know, it wasn't until Soul Calibur came out on the Dreamcast where I finally saw like, wow, the way that you're able to move with the eight-way run, that is really what a 3D game is all about. Soul Calibur. It's a special and unique game. The characters are very unique. The weapon-based combat, it really, it's not predictable what's gonna happen when you push a button because every weapon is so different. And it's really user-friendly and inviting for people. So I think it's a fluid combat-based game that is really easy on the eyes. It's got a lot more fire and, you know, lightning and effects. So Calibur's gameplay specifically and its 3D elements are unique because of the mobility of the game and the reach the characters have. So because it's a weapon-based fighter, many fighting games at the time when Soul Calibur was coming out were mostly hand-to-hand -hand ordeals. And Soul Calibur did things a lot differently. The characters moved a lot faster than those games did, and they had a lot more reach and a lot more damage, it felt like. And that made the stakes feel very high, and it also just made the gameplay very engaging. Knockout! I think Soul Calibur is a fighting game that is really accessible, but so hard to master. Here you have to guess, you have to be mentally ready to fight your opponent, because you have to be right at least five or ten times to win a match. You know, if you mix between a mid, a high, low moves and throw. That's why I love this game so much, because it's really a mental fight between two players. Oh no, that's so it. Mix up. It had an environmental thing that was called Ring Out, which was totally different at the time from what all the other games I played. So the fact that you could hit somebody once and they can die in the game, and I thought that was crazy just to be able to win rounds that way, being able to push your opponent out of the ring. To appease the winds, the priestess rises to the challenge. The announcer in Soul Calibur is really iconic, and the lines are perfect. Like, come on. Welcome back to the stage of history. Welcome back to the stage of history. It's one of those aesthetic things that you don't really think about, but heightens the experience a lot. The delicate balance between good and evil wavers within him. And that became a big thing for Soul Calibur because you have this somber guy narrating the tale of Souls and Swords as you're fighting and the breath of the wind graces his blade. I think all that cheesy stuff is, is a good part of Soul Calibur that absolutely needs to stay. The winds fan the flames of the warriors fighting spirits. I will give you a taste of true battle. The legacy of the characters in Soul Calibur's universe, as well as the way they've looked and they've grown or they've ungrown in certain games has always been really captivating and interesting. And every single time there's been several years in between these games, it's always fascinating to see where the characters are being taken, how they're changing, and how their movesets are changing because that's a big part of the Soul Calibur series too. They're very distinct. Obviously they have different weapons, but I don't know, it's like you can look at a silhouette and you can tell immediately what that character is. Well, my favorite character in Soul Calibur has always been Valdo, but I also really like Yoshimitsu, and I think they always do a great job of making that character. It's a guest character from Tekken, but it's always been in every Soul Calibur. And it's a very unique take on the character, much more sword-based and like samurai style than uh, the Tekken counterpart, but Valdo's my favorite. He's also really weird and underplayed, and at the time he was really underexplored too. A lot of people didn't know how good he was and I always thought that he was really capable. So, I don't know, I just connected with the character. Okay, respect the frame advantage. Follow up into the low oh, and air is gonna probably oh, go for it again oh, this time. No. Just nips oh. him and that's gonna be it. The first time I played Soul Calibur, I was seven years old. I played with uh, Soul Calibur 1 and Dreamcast. I really felt in love with uh, Soul Calibur 1 because of the medieval, fantastic uh, universe. The characters, I felt in love with uh, Xiongfa. 
I, when I started fighting games, I was really young, seven years old, and uh, I always choose characters that I want to look like later. <laughs> when you are a little girl, you, you can have models, you can have singers, but I choose to have a character as a model. <laughs> Excellent! No complaints here! Transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords, eternally retold. Around the first EVO event, Soul Calibur 2 came out around that same time frame in arcades. So I was like, oh man, this is my first time seeing Soul Calibur 2. Everybody was hooked. I remember the day that game showed up, people flocked to the arcades. There was 20 to 30 minute waits in like a local tilt mall arcade. Soul Calibur 2, which was the one that I really was hardcore into, that game was a big arcade game. And it lasted in the arcades for a long time before it came to console. And even after console, people played it in the arcade. So it was a very, very different all around experience than anything you could get now. It's completely different. One mix up. Oh, what? Oh, the clash, and that's work. it. Esam's gonna take oh. it over the So, you know, I came from the era, you know, when Soul Calibur V was a competitive game for Soul Calibur 1 and Soul Calibur 2, you would research online on the internet, kind of find these message boards or these groups of people that actually play and take the game seriously. The most active communities are the ones that put themselves out there the most. And that was everyone in SoCal, in Chicago, and then everyone in the, the Northeast as well. But then there was another country that was really supporting their players, and that was the French community. Just the way they get into it. Like the French people, they're really into this game Soul Calibur for whatever reason, and there's a lot of them that play. You just see what competition breeds in that environment. Like, for example, Kayane, arguably the best female fighting gamer of all time. I think it came from a player and organizer that is called Asenka, and he started to organize Soul Calibur tournaments. I think everybody was so hyped about this game and seeing tournaments on this and seeing how the atmosphere was really attracted many players to just play this game. And since there was team tournaments, that's how we had the team building, we had team rivalries in France, and that's how we gathered. We went to casual stations, to someone's house, and we would play with all the team, gather, eat pizza, <laughs> and play all day. And we were like a second family. They definitely have always been a super, super strong seen. It's been USA versus France in that game since the beginning. It's old school, but uh, the team tournament we had in 2004 in Cannes, in France, between France and America. This tournament was the beginning of the French and American rivalries. In 2003, Dan the Nightmare, who was a legendary Soul Calibur 1 player, was coming to the US to compete at EVO. Dan the Nightmare was the player to beat, period. Like, it doesn't matter if you were in France or anywhere in the world. If he showed up, he's the guy to beat. Dan the Nightmare beat me twice, and he eliminated some of the best players. And then in 2004, Xbox was sponsoring a tournament called World Game Cup in Cannes, France. And it comes down to the grand finals, where Aris is sitting in winners, and Dan the Nightmare is in losers. I've never seen Aris play as good as he did that day. Like, he's a good player, but at that event, he was like playing out of his world good. And that was the, also the first time that America beat France on French soil. Before then, every time from the 90s up until 2004, whenever America went to France, play Soul Calibur, we got bodied. And I was ready for him because of the way I lost to him the previous year. At that time, there was no YouTube, so there was no real way to scout each other out or see how we've been doing or how our game has evolved. It wasn't something that existed at the time. So when I walked into that tournament on Sunday, the whole time I was playing Yoshimitsu and I played Dan the Nightmare and I really did well against him. What they did was they left the room and they practiced against Yoshimitsu because they thought, okay, Dan the Nightmare went to America, he beat Eris, he beat his Valdo easily, and now he switched to Yoshi as a counterpick, but I, that wasn't the case. I was just sandbagging him. So he wasn't at all prepared for Valdo when we played. And I clearly remember after the first set, I beat him and then 
he was delaying our second set because he wanted to do, test some stuff out against the character. And I had to like say, go, let's go. I don't want to wait, you know, I, I don't want to wait. I, I pressured him because I didn't want, I mean, I, you can't test in the middle of a tournament. And it was awesome, you know, was, people still talk about it today. You're asking me about an interview, it was a hundred years ago, you know, so yeah, it was awesome. It's one of my good memories as a player. This is where it all started. And I think that the fact that these players, most of these players are still playing now. So we conserve that history, this rivalry, and France has lost the team tournament to America. So we still remember that. <laughs> you know, I, I'll probably have to agree with you. You know, everyone considers Soul Calibur 2 to be like, you know, one of the strongest entry in the series, when, especially when it comes to the competitive landscape of things. Soul Calibur 2 was such a refined game. You know, there was so many debates on tiers and characters in the game on which character was the best. And, you know, it went back and forth. I mean, the game was still played for years and years after it came out, even during the other iterations of the game. Soul Calibur 3 came out, Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition, there was Soul Calibur 4 and eventually Soul Calibur 5. I feel like, you know, those games really never captured the same competitive uh, feel that Soul Calibur 2 had. Not only was the arcade version really good and it introduced people to a much faster method of playing Soul Calibur, but the console versions were amazing because they had guest characters that no one was expecting and that was a new big crazy thing. Alongside that, Soul Calibur 3, while still being a really good fighting game, was kind of plagued with a lot of high level issues when it came out that were ultimately addressed in an arcade version update. And then Soul Calibur 4 was popular because of Star Wars characters and I was excited for that reason. But a lot of the online infrastructure and the way the game played, because there was no arcade version, there wasn't much of a scene for many of us to go to. So that was very refreshing when Soul Calibur V came along. The net play was ironed out a little bit better, and Bandai Namco was starting to get their hands on how online fighting games should work. I mean, they all had their, their quirks and they all had their, you know, their cool things about them, but there was always something about it. And I don't know whether it was just the game balance or the character balance in general, but there was always something that kind of swayed away you know, the, the popular opinion from the people that love Soul Calibur 2 and kind of made them not you know, enjoy it as much. The year before at Comic-Con during our panel, there was a 20th anniversary segment where we talked about the 20th anniversary and if people want to see a new Soul Calibur game that they should keep supporting it and letting, the, letting Bandai Namco Entertainment know what they want to see in the future. Little did everyone know is that there was a Soul Calibur game already being worked on. It just needed the right place in the right time. The wait is over. Let's begin. <laughs>